Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another webinar in a series that I have started on a website uh, that I call Design, Create, and Share at designcreateshare.com. My name is Dr. Wes Fryer, and today's webinar is entitled Tips for Becoming a More Connected Educator. Transform your life with five mobile apps. Um, today's webinar is being recorded, and I do expect that we will uh, have far more people that will listen to this uh, in the recorded version than we do live, but um, I would uh, encourage you to go ahead and check out the slides and resources for this presentation, and you can find those by visiting the shortened link wfriar.me slash connected. That is going to forward you to a Google site that I've been maintaining since about 2010 with all the presentation resources that I share. You can also hold up your iPhone with the camera app open uh, when you see a QR code like that, and it should give you a little pop-up and allow you to uh, immediately click and go to that, that link. So my Twitter handle is W Fryer, and I'll be talking quite a bit about Twitter today. And so I would love for you, if you find these resources to be helpful, um, would love for you to reach out to me, and you can uh, do that by sending a message to, to me at, at W Fryer. So today we're talking about transforming your life with five apps, and that probably seems a little bit awesome, um, grandiose, I suppose. Uh, and I will tell you that at educational technology conferences, I do tend to not favor presentations that are like 50 apps in 50 minutes. I mean, it it's great to get to know about new things because you you have to learn about them in order to decide whether or not to use them. And if you don't know about them and you don't use them at all, that like they can't they can't uh, be a benefit to you. You know, couldn't change your life at all. But uh, I also tend to be a person that that does not favor the the use of the saying, oh, the technology doesn't matter, because I do believe whatever technology tools you have, you should use them well. But technology that you have does matter. And it's not just a matter of the hardware that you have and the software, it's also the access of whether you've got access to high-speed internet and how filtered is that is that access. I mean, we definitely, I think, need to have basic levels of content filtering, both to comply with the, the law, if we receive E-rate funds in the United States, you know, in schools and libraries, uh, but also just to protect young people and uh, also, you know, to protect everyone from things like malware and, you know, hacked websites and things like that. But I definitely think that, um, you know, the use of the apps I'm going to talk about today certainly can transform your life because it's transformed mine. And so this presentation is a bit of, is a, bit of a testimony with that because you know, as I look back over the last 15 years since I started my podcast, the last 17 years when I started blogging back in 2003, I am absolutely a, a different educator and I think a better educator and, and also like a better person, you know, not just in terms of teaching and learning, but in terms of my other uh, hats and, and life roles as a result of the connections that I have been able to make and continue to make with others with these apps. So, I want to mention this framework just briefly. This is the SAMR uh, framework. And as we talk about the ways in which technology tools are used, you know, all of us start at the at the bottom. We start at a substitution level where we we take a task that we used to do without without technology, and then we add technology, and and so we move into this augmentation, modification, and finally a redefinition mode. Well, I argue that. Authentic student engagement in both remote learning, which is where we find ourselves today because of COVID-19 and the coronavirus global pandemic, as well as face-to-face -face learning require us to redefine traditional pedagogy. In other words, you know, just delivering content and, and hoping, you know, some people will call that a, a spray and pray approach to teaching. Um, you know, we, we can't simply d deliver or present content uh, to students and think that that is going to become, uh, you know, sticky learning and that it's also going to, you know, possibly transform and change their life. I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that happen. People are reached in different ways. You need to be able to get access to information and ideas in some way in order to be changed by them. But I really think that as we want to move towards what I would call pedagogical redefinition, you know, moving into learning strategies and uh, learning models that are much more engaging for students and much more authentic um, 
and, and, and motivating. We want to be connected to other people who are doing this. And so this is a big reason for us as educators to be connected. So I sometimes share this at the end, but I wanted to just put this at the beginning. If you would like to find other ways to learn with me, I continue to share on a variety of different websites and those are listed on my website, westfriar.com slash after. And I actually learned this technique from a keynote speaker in Egypt a couple years ago at a conference I was able to uh, attend and uh, share some, some sessions at. And, and so anyway, I encourage you to check that out. So today's outline, we are going to first off start with a story. And then second of all, I'm going to focus on five different apps that can literally transform your life. They have transformed mine. So um, they, they, they may not have that effect on you, but they certainly could. And I think these among you know, all the different tools that I could possibly say, here, try this. You know, this these are the top ones. Um, I'm going to share a few challenges with you uh, before you leave and then see if we have time for some Q&A. And I want to invite anybody who would like to, to post a question into the chat, which I can um, moderate or I guess not moderate. It'll, it'll just pop up there uh, the way we have this configured today. But um, I'll be able to see that and give voice to that uh, question. So if you want to go ahead and ask, please do so. So let's begin with a story. It is important to remember that our brains are wired for storytelling and you know, no matter how much technology we have and, and all these different apps and tools, you know, some things are pretty basic like stories. And so this past September, in uh, September of 2019, I had a chance to share a keynote at the Story Chasers podcasting conference that was here in Oklahoma City. And I took as my theme uh, this from the musical Hamilton, the idea of who tells your story. And so this was a slide actually that I had shared in that presentation telling about my podcasting origin story. The picture in the lower left corner that you see there is Bob Sprankle, um, a late Maine educator who um, is no longer with us, but was an incredible inspiration to me and to many other teachers as an early early adopter and pioneer with podcasting in the classroom, a real advocate for student voice. You know, my uh, my friendship with Bob, which started off reading a New York Times article that he, he was featured in back in 2005, uh, really shaped a lot of what I have grown to do with students and teachers in the classroom, both as a classroom teacher and an instructional coach and a technology director and distance learning director in these different hats that I've worn over the years. Um, had a chance to help start a statewide oral history project back in 2007 here in Oklahoma called Celebrate Oklahoma Voices. Helped start a nonprofit called Story Chasers that um, helped share professional development about oral history and digital storytelling with hundreds of teachers across our state. Um, at the time I worked in Yukon Public Schools as an instructional coach, um, I helped co-lead an after school club we called the Lakeview Elementary Story Chaser Club. And uh, eventually these digital connections like we're talking about led me to meet a wonderful Montana educator named Jason Neifer. And Jason and I now have a weekly show on Wednesday nights called the EdTech Situation Room. And so all of these things basically kind of form an arc of influence and they were very much catalyzed or initiated by digital connections like the apps and the platforms that I'm gonna talk about today. So in that keynote for, for Story Chasers for the podcasting conference, I, I talked a little bit about, and I challenged everyone to think about their podcasting origin story. And today, as we start, I want you, I want you to think about your teaching origin story and how that is how that is ongoing. Because the Avengers, as they're portrayed in you know the most recent movies, and I will admit to you, I'm not a, a big comic, I'm not a comic book you know fan, and so I've I've just watched these movies. Uh, these are not Lone Rangers, okay? The Avengers are connected, they work together, and they are they're powerful and effective because they work as a team. And so similarly, this is what we need to do both with the folks we work at with at our schools and our organizations, but we can now be connected globally in crazy powerful ways, right? Because, I mean, there are teachers on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in the United Kingdom, uh, teachers in Australia, teachers in China. I mean, you know, lots of different places that have influenced me and continue to influence me. And it's just really amazing and wonderful to live in the day in which we do, where we have those kinds of chances to be connected. We hear a lot of negative headlines about how, you know, 
destructive and, and, and harmful uh, these social media tools can be. But there's two sides to that sword. And while they can be used to, to harm others, they can also be used to you know, help and constructively uh, improve, <laughs> I would say, learning and lives. So very basic idea here, and that is that other brains shape us, okay? We want to hang out with people who are doing things better than we are, who are who, who maybe have a more advanced understanding of ideas and concepts that we want to appropriate and take on. And so a challenge is how, how do you get to do that? How do you get to hang out with people? Well, it used to be that we had to be physically present together. And isn't it amazing right now that as I, you know, record this on a Saturday morning, you know, in the back room of our house here in Oklahoma City, because I'm sharing this on YouTube, because I'm putting this out on Anchor on a podcast, the, you know, you could be literally anywhere on the planet that has internet connectivity, or if you've downloaded it, you know, in, in advance, you could download it and take it with you. And you could be learning with this information. And so this question of how do we hang out with smart people, the answer to that has gotten a lot bigger in the last 15 or so years because interactive technologies, which were initially called Web 2.0, and now a lot of those are called social media platforms, allow us to interact with others that we wouldn't otherwise be face-to-face -face interacting with. Of course, we can also be interacting digitally with people who we do see face-to-face, -face, and that's a wonderful thing that continues to happen at our school. We just started a private Facebook group about two weeks ago as we went into our remote learning phase, and you know it is it's a great thing to be able to to make different connections and also just to support each other uh, learn together and live life together so what i'd like to do now is shift to talking about some different apps and the five apps that i want to talk about you know if i was these are the best ones okay i could i could talk about 50 apps but i don't want to i want to talk about the five most powerful and so we're going to talk about uh Twitter, Pocket Casts, and Pocket. Both Twitter and Pocket are available for Android as well as iPhone. Uh, and well, I guess actually all these are. Um, all these except um, the, um, the Nuzzle app, I think, is only for iPhone. So um, I've provided the links to the iPhone versions here, but the apps themselves are available for both. The fourth and fifth apps are Flipboard, and then this app called Nuzzle, um, which actually was out of the App Store this past month for a little, little while, and I tweeted about it, and the developer, you know, emailed back, and I guess something something happened, and they got it back in there. But uh, for a number of years, these have been my go-to apps. Um, I just started using actually the new iOS Google Podcasts app, but I'm very heavily invested in the Pocket Casts app, and so I want to uh, demonstrate and talk about how to use that. So. What I like to do now is move into what I'm gonna call a demo time. What I have done is I have um, op opened up the QuickTime Player application on my computer. And let me see here if I can switch over to it. And so what you're hopefully able to see here in the middle of my screen is my phone. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just spend a little bit of time uh, doing some demos for you. And I'm gonna pull down in the middle of the screen to open up Spotlight, and I'm going to go to Twitter, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I will will do regularly on Twitter. Um, so first thing to recognize is you can be logged in to more than one Twitter account. I have uh, several several different accounts. Um, I keep a an account for oh, don't worry, I didn't, don't want to log into that one if I'm not logged in currently. Um, I keep an account for our uh, EdTech Situation Room. I'm going to have to log into that one. So. I won't be going to that one right now. Um, I, you know, I keep a separate one where I uh, share, uh, you know, Christian uh, Bible verses and things like that. But this is my primary account. This is my W Fryer account, and so I am using the app for Twitter. I can also be using the website. And uh, some of the things that I do on a regular basis is I'll I'll go down here to the little bell um, and see uh, things that people have either responded to by liking or they have retweeted. Sometimes people are going to ask me a question and look at this, talk about influences. There is Cheryl Oaks. And so Cheryl is one of the seedlings, which I'm actually wearing my seedling shirt today, um, that together with Alice Barr and Bob Sprinkle, you know, were such a, a great influence in terms of podcasting. And so 
uh, there's Cheryl, you know, say, because I, I had tweeted about listening to one of these podcasts. So I'm just going to re reply to Cheryl and say, so glad you found these, comma, coincidental that I am talking about Bob today in a webinar. And I'll uh, go ahead and change his name to his Twitter ID. And um, Bob has Bob passed away in 2005, so he is not going to be seeing this on planet Earth. Um, but for for Cheryl and other people, uh, they can you know see this, and and this will show up in in her notifications because I'm replying to her. Um, I'm also going to say and the seedlings, which is the name of their podcast that they did for years. And if I can spell right, it's hard to talk and spell at the same time. Um, so there you go, there's, there's a tweet that I'm going to be sending to her. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a carbon copy. So I'm gonna say CC and then my friend Alice Barr, who is also one of the seedlings, um, is going to see that as well. Um, and I'm gonna say miss you all. Now, what is different about sending this versus an email? Well, the biggest thing is this, it, an email message is a one to a defined number of people, okay? Because you, you put in addresses, you can be using, you know, contact groups or whatever, and there could be a lot of folks, but when you are posting something on Twitter, it's public, and therefore you don't know exactly where it's going to go and how many people are going to see it. But it's extremely powerful uh, to be able to do this. Oh, look, and then I wrote a blog post and I did a shout out to Cheryl, and she says, thanks, I'll try that out. So I'm just gonna click the little heart and, and like that. Um, so this is one of the ways that I am you know, learning on a regular basis because I am connected to people. I follow people, uh, some of whom I, uh, you know, I know most of whom I don't know, but most of them are educators because that those are the kind of things that I share. And then when I, when I find somebody new, like, okay, here's somebody, I don't know who this is. Um, huh. Based on what they shared in their profile there, uh, I'm not going to follow them. You know, I, we are to a degree judged by the, the company that we keep. And, um, you know, if somebody certainly that, I don't, didn't see profanity there, but it talked about being drunk. So it's, I'm, this is a professional channel for me. And I'm generally going to just, you know, make sure that, you know, if, if anybody else sees who I'm following, that those are going to be accounts that are going to be, uh, uh, you know, not offensive in, in some kind of way. But this is a link that looks pretty interesting. This is called, uh, this is from Tom's Guide, which is a, a website that I know, and uh, it's about Zoom. And so uh, what are the things that I can do with this article in Twitter? Well, if I wanted to, I could simply tap the retweet button there. So underneath this article, there's a, there's a link here to write a comment, okay? And I could reply to that. I could also like it which I actually will, I'll, I'll say that I like that. Um, I, I could retweet that, but in this case, I actually, um, and this isn't always the case, a lot of times I will, but um, since I'm not gonna follow this person, I'm not gonna directly retweet that. So I'm gonna tap on that, and then in the bottom right corner, I'm going to open up this article here in my Safari browser, all right? And so this article looks like something that I would want to share. So I'm gonna be you know, talking about a couple different apps actually together because this is what I tend to do when I find an article like this um, that, that I want to read. And I'll go ahead and scan, ah, yuck. Well, that's one of the problems with looking at an article that is on, um, you know, a website running advertisements and stuff. Of course, you don't have access, well, you don't have the ability on your phone to be able to block the ads. I block those on my computer, but I can't do that here. Tom's Guide, though, is a very, uh, you know, reputable source, and, um, you know, I'm I'm fine sharing this. But that that's actually part of the, the thought process as well, is that I'm going to share it. I need to make sure that I have taken a look at who has shared this, the content that, that they've shared. Um, and this is something I'm really interested in, actually, because, 
you know, there's a lot of conversation right now about Zoom and problems that are happening with video conferencing, et cetera. So here's what I do when I find an article like this that I want to share. I will tap on the share square here at the bottom and I can go ahead and share it on Twitter. So I'm going to tap Twitter and generally it is going to pop up with the uh, title of the article. But instead of just leaving it like that, I will go ahead and set and put in the Twitter um, it's Tom's guide, I guess. I will put in the Twitter handle, and that way the person who wrote this, or in this case, that organization, Tom's guide, I'm sure Tom is not the only person looking at this, will be able to see, um, I'm, I'm, I'm giving a shout out, I'm giving credit to that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna use a hashtag and I'm gonna put in some hashtags that I follow and other people follow related to this. So EdTech, I have been using the hashtag COVID-19 EDU for um, the um, you know global pandemic that we're finding ourselves in and the educational responses to it. Um, I also use a lot of times Okla Ed, that's our state hashtag. Um, if I wanted to talk about this for school, I could put uh, Cassidy Learns. I am gonna copy this to our technology manager, and so I'm gonna put his um, Twitter handle I can spell again his name right. And so now <clears throat> this article is not only going out to be shared with you know, anybody who's following me and, and happens to have Twitter open, the algorithm plays into this as far as what is actually shared, um, but Jeremy is going to see this. Um, I'm also gonna add one more hashtag, and this is kind of a fancy thing, but <clears throat> when I put the hashtag EdTechSR on it, um, I have, this is really pretty geeky, I use a, a, a platform called If This Then That, and I have set up a recipe or an applet so that every time I, I tweet with that hashtag, it takes that article and it puts it into a Google document. And so on Wednesday nights, uh, this coming Wednesday, I wanna talk about this article. And so by putting that hashtag into this tweet, it automatically goes over in the Google doc. All right, so here we go, tweet. So that has been shared out there. Now there's a couple other things that I will do. I'm gonna tap and we're gonna be talking about Pocket because I scanned this article, but I wanna read this in greater detail and maybe also follow some of the links. So I'm gonna tap Pocket and because I've already signed into my account, it saves it and this is basically a place where I can go back later and I'll be able to uh, read it. And also I'll, I'll be able to read it without these ads, right? I don't wanna see, it's interesting that updated, there was something about earwax and now it's talking about locksmith services. Those are gonna be taken out when I read it in pocket. The last thing I'm gonna tap on here is Flipboard. And by the way, when you're here on your, your iPhone, you can tap more and this will give you a chance to edit these. And so let's say, you know, I wanted Pocket to be higher in the list. I can rearrange those. I can, um, you know, add additional things. And so that way, you know, the things that I use most commonly are gonna be first. So I'm gonna tap on Flipboard and you can create magazines on Flipboard. And I have one called iReading. These are actually a bunch of magazines that I have, but iReading is the, is the main one. And I'm just gonna flip it over there because a lot of times I will be doing reading and um, you know consumption of information in Flipboard as I'm gonna be talking about a little bit more. Da -da, so there we are, we've just been in Twitter and I have just shown you an example of how I will oftentimes come across articles, I will learn things, I will sometimes share those back with other people, but then I will do something else with it like putting it into my pocket, sharing it into Flipboard, sometimes copying other people that I think, you know, might be interested in that article, all right? So, um, I don't tend to come here to the house or the home button on Twitter that often because, oh my gosh, you know, I, uh, there, there's just so many different people. I mean, I'm, I'm following uh, 32,000 people and that just, you know, some sometimes, and, and the Twitter algorithm is is working here where it's going to try and show me the things that it thinks is gonna be most, uh, most most beneficial or helpful. But I mean, this is overwhelming, right? This is just so much content. So here's what I do instead. I really like to use lists. And so I'm gonna tap over here on lists and inside Twitter, I can see different lists that I have created. Uh, in fact, I have created one uh, recently for coronavirus. Okay, I only have one person who's on there. That's not that great of a list. Um, I haven't built that one. There's, I think, 
me see if you've got lists that you've also subscribed to that other people have and so let's go down here and see if we can see those as well because um what i wanted to see is one that my friend jason neifer had recommended that is being curated about man this is a big mix it's being curated about coronavirus um and i may not be able to to, to pull that one up. You can make Twitter lists. You can also follow lists that other people uh, use. One of the ones that I um, am, am enjoying and liking to follow a whole lot now is, well, let me talk about this Digi URI. So last summer, I went to the University of Rhode Island in Providence, attended a great week-long summer institute called the Summer Institute on Digital Literacy. And I built a Twitter list with the Twitter IDs of all the people that were there. And if I tap here on members, you can see here, here are all these different folks. And so what I've done with this Twitter list is I have created a funnel, a feed of all the things that these people are sharing. Now, everything that they're sharing is not going to be about media literacy, but a lot of these folks are definitely, you know, connected educators who enjoy sharing things. And so this is a filtered feed that you know i can access in order to see the kinds of things that that they're sh they're sharing um let me go to another one um my probably my favorite one that i do all the time is my yoda's list oh the media literacy so this this one actually ha i have 83 members in it now uh, but these are are people and authors that are uh, really focused on media literacy which is one of the things that i teach now to fifth and sixth graders and so when I want to, you know, learn about media literacy, it's like I pick up a magazine, but I'm I'm able to use Twitter, and here's how I filter the the literally millions of messages that are being shared and created. Um, I'm going to go down to to the last one I think because it's under it's why, but I call this one my Yoda's list, and looks like this one is, huh? It's bringing in the other lists. Uh, from other people as well. I was thinking it would just show my lists and then it would show the other ones. There it is, the last one, Yoda's. So I have 96 people on this list and these are all folks who for different reasons are are really exceptional in terms of um, the, the, their roles that they play in, in education. Uh, and so as I, as I see these things, if there's something that I wanna take a look at, I can certainly tap on it. Um, I can also, you know, retweet, I can like, I, I use the like a lot for articles that I find because um, that gives feedback. People who have, have shared something can tell how many people have liked it. And so that that's just, that's a little bit for how I use Twitter. Twitter is an incredibly powerful platform, an incredibly powerful tool. All right, let's look at my clock and see how I'm doing on time. So looks like I've uh, taken about half of the time, so that's okay. Um, we're gonna try to, to keep this under an hour. Second thing I wanna talk about now, uh, leaving the Twitter app um, is, is uh, Pocket Casts. So uh, you'll, you'll see I have it right down here on my dock because it is a an app that I use quite a bit. And um, what I'm looking at right here is a refresh list of podcasts that I subscribe to. You can change the sort order. This is by episode release day, but if I'd wanna sort them by the date I added them or by the podcast name, uh, this World Affairs is absolutely fantastic. This is one of the ones that I, um, I was listening to uh, over a month ago and really helped me understand a little bit more what was happening with coronavirus and COVID and um, the kinds of preparations and things like that that we needed to do. So I have subscribed to this. I can tap this button and download that. So that means even if I'm not connected to the internet, once this downloads, I'll be able to play that. I can tap up next. And so there's a Q, spelled Q-U-E, UE, is that right? <laughs> Trying to spell without writing down. I'm a visual speller. Um, so I will have this in, in my my upcoming uh, you know playlist of podcasts that I want to listen to. Uh, so that is just fantastic. If you have a podcast that you want to search for, uh, you can click on the Discover tab. This is actually one of the most important things that 
both uh, Google is trying to work on with their Google Podcast app. I mean, I guess I could show that. I um, I'm not I'm not nearly the fan of the Google Podcast app as I am. I guess I have to make sure I include a space there. Um, I've only been using this one for about a week, and I still really like Pocket Cast. But one of the great things, of course, about Google is its ability to study our information that we share and then be able to give us recommendations. So based upon what I have been listening to in the app, it's now making suggestions. And look, there's it's recommending a World Affairs podcast uh, for me. Um, I can tap here and maybe I see it over here. Here's my subscription. So I went ahead, I, I have over 100 subscriptions over in Pocket Cast, and I, I didn't want to bring all of those over. So these are all the podcasts that I brought over, I think, last weekend when I started to use this app. So, I mean, Google Podcasts is available. Pocket Cast, though, is the one that I really enjoy the most. Um, if I tap here on filters, I can, um, you know, see just the, the ones that I've downloaded, the ones that I'm playing. Um, you know, I can star podcasts. So there's a lot of different ways to filter that. Um, and then, you know, one of the things that can happen too is this can take up a lot of storage. So you can end up uh, deleting and clearing out the um, the downloaded podcasts that you have. Right now, I only have five that are downloaded. So that's not, not, it's not taking up a lot of space, but you can also create your own filters. So uh, this is my favorite podcast app. It is phenomenal. I love listening to uh, the BBC's Tech Tent. Uh, I listen to that, you know, almost every week uh, for tech news. Uh, Houston, we have a podcast. Oh gosh, this is fantastic. Uh, interviews with Apollo astronauts and others involved in the space program. Um, there's, there's so, so many. Um, Tech News Weekly is one that I've uh, started to listen to, um, not every week, but but quite a bit, and they do a good job covering the, the week's technology headlines or recent ones. Love the Ezra Klein Show. Clockwise has just inspired us at school to start a similar formatted show. They have 30 minutes, they have four guests, and each guest brings a question, and they just kind of go around the table and answer the questions. And a lot of this, you know, focuses on technology, Apple stuff, um, but um, you know, I've got a real mix here. I've got, you know, Christian podcasts, I've got, you know, technology, security, um, all kinds of things. But being able to have access to these channels is so, so powerful. And I don't know if I go all the way to the bottom, let's see, I think I might have unsubscribed. Um, I don't have Bob Sprankles on here anymore. Um, you know, when 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 podcasts haven't been updated, they're going to end up, you know, being down here at the bottom. And sometimes people's addresses are going to change the feed address that they're using. But um, you know, this is this is just such a powerful tool, and I can't can't tell you uh, strongly enough how how awesome Pocket Casts is. So what I'd like to do now is show you Pocket. I'm going to go ahead again and just uh, tap uh, into Spotlight, and I'll tap Pocket. And oh, what do we see as our top article here? It's the Tom's Guide article that I found on Twitter when I had logged in. And look how Pocket shows me an estimate of how long they think it will take me to read this. That's about a seven minute read. Now, when I tap on this in Pocket, oh, look how lovely that is. There's the title, there's the author and the, the date and time. But look, there's not any distracting and yucky ad for earwax or, you know, locksmith or whatever else uh, was there. It has just provided a clean version of this article and I can I can sit here and read it. Uh, sometimes I will recommend it. And so when I click on recommend, uh, I could be sharing it to Twitter, but this will actually just recommend it inside the pocket world and if I go here so this is my list let me see if I go to um, how do I go to my recommendation so shared to me would be articles that uh, people have specifically sent me and you know people aren't really doing that very much um, I'm trying to think. There's a way that you can browse to individuals that you follow, and then you can, uh, you know, directly see the things that that they are recommending. Um, once you've read it, you you archive it, and so it goes goes into another place there. Um, so 
this is Pocket. And I think Pocket is hugely powerful and um, really an essential tool because we never have time to fully read and, you know, process all the content that we're coming into, you know, that we're coming into contact with during a particular day. And so Pocket is this place where you can go ahead and save things and come back to it later. And it really, really is fantastic. So the last two I want to talk about are also here in a folder I call Learn. I generally try to keep my, my phone um, pretty clean in terms of the number of folders. And um, I've got the apps that I, you know, of course, use the most on the dock and then very quickly here to be able to access them. And so what I want to do now is open up Flipboard. Flipboard is an app that you can have for your tablet or your, your uh, phone. And look at that. There's another article about Zoom bombing. So all kinds of, um, you know, articles now coming out about Zoom and its dangers. So um, I'm not going to read this whole article right now. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to share it like that. Uh, huh, that's interesting. Okay, share storyboard via. I want to put it into my pocket. So I'll tap here, and then this article is going to hopefully go into my pocket account. Now, sometimes, yay, sometimes that doesn't work, and uh, it's just because I think of the way that they have um, coded the site. Um, but uh, yeah, so there, there it is. I can come back, but I can also, you know, read it now. And um, the ability, this is just a summary kind of curated page of articles that I can kind of go through. Um, but when I click here on my grid, this is where things I think get the most interesting in Flipboard. Okay, remember I showed you earlier on Twitter. Let me go there again real quick to remind you. Um, I have lists on Twitter. And one of the ones I said I really like to follow, um, and this is at the very bottom of my Twitter list, is my Yoda's list. So this is a list of almost 100 folks that are just really, you know, fantastic educators, and they share a lot generally. And um, they're they're the people. Like if you're going to start with a list to to follow, I would go for for my Yoda's list. And you can get to that, by the way. Um, and I I think I I do I've got a list. Um, on this, let me do it. So I'm going to use our shortened link. Remember, we um, remember. Well, I guess I I could scan the QR code, but I'm just going to do wfryer.me, and then I'm going to do slash connected because that's what I said was our shortened URL. So when you type that in, here you go on the Google site, and we've got a description, we've got the slides, and then when you go down a little bit, um, it's going to say you know follow some some Twitter lists. So uh, when you click on this, this is going to be my uh, lists that I have on Twitter, and you can follow any of these that you would like. So at the very bottom of this is the, the list called Yoda's. Now, what I'm going to, there it is. What I'm going to do now is instead of, ah, click on that, I want the list. There we go. Um, I want to not view this in Twitter. I want to see this in Flipboard. And the reason for that is because Flipboard, I think, just does such a nice job formatting everything. So I have subscribed to my list here in Flipboard. And so I can flip through these articles and see if I want to read one of them. And if I do, I'll go ahead and tap on it. And let me find an example of one. Um, Sometimes, you know, there's political stuff that's here. Um, you know, it's, I, I don't always just share, you know, educational technology stuff. There's other things that, that I will uh, share as well. Um, and so anyway, it's, you're, you're seeing a filtered list, but you know, people are, are sometimes sharing diverse things. Um, so let's say I want to check check this out. Diane Ravitch retweeted this. Uh, this is an article called The Realities of K-12 Virtual Education. I'll go ahead and tap it. And so this article, I'm still inside Flipboard, has opened and I can go ahead and read this. I love to be able to use Flipboard, especially on my iPad on the larger screen, but even here on the, the iPhone, it is fantastic. And so being able to do this with lists is great. 
here's a list that is just for the people at our school. So, um, <laughs> um, again, I'll use the hearts. And when, when even when you heart here in Flipboard, that actually does like it over on Twitter. And so this is a great way that I stay up on things that, you know, people in our school community are sharing because I've made a Twitter list of, uh, of their Twitter IDs. Um, let's see, I'll go to another example. Um, here's an example of a magazine someone else curates. This is Nazneen Rahman, and this is called Medical uh, Innovations. And a lot of this focuses on genomics. And wow, there is just some amazing articles here. And th this person is specifically curating an, this, this magazine to focus on these topics. And so that is also great too, because this is an example of how, you know, we don't have to do all the work, right? There's lots of people sharing and, and organizing and curating content. Uh, this one I love, this is my STEM, STEM teachers um, Twitter list. And so all the people who are on here, and some of them may have changed jobs since I added them, uh, but at the time I added them, they were all classroom teachers teaching STEM. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, how would you subscribe if you wanted to do this? You wanted to put one of your Twitter lists in here and subscribe. Well, when you click over here on your, um, your user icon in the bottom right corner, in the upper left corner, there's the cog where you go to your, um, your settings. And you need, good grief. Um, oh, I think I remember how. We're going to we're going to we're going to actually go here to the square and we're going to say that we want to add a um, basically add a square or, or which is a magazine. And so it says following all profiles or accounts. When I type on a, or touch on accounts, these are the different accounts that I have. And here's my Twitter. And so this is where I can actually go into my list. I can also go into lists that I follow. Ha ha! And there's the one that I wanted. Uh, Jason Neifer had shared this recently. Um, a journalist named Jeff Jarvis, an author who's pretty amazing, he has created a, a list um, for COVID, for, for COVID-19. And so <clears throat> rather than me building my own, I'm just going to follow Jeff's. So I'm going to tap on follow. And now let's look what happens. I'm going to be clicking back. So I'm going to follow my breadcrumbs back here and I'll, and I'll go back home. So if I go to my four squares here at the at the very bottom to see my magazines, look at that. My last one is called COVID by Jeff Jarvis. And these are the articles that he has curated focusing on this particular topic. This is incredibly powerful. And for those of you that are new to Twitter, I may have just I may have lost you, you know, 15 minutes ago. I, I hope I didn't. But um, you know, what I what I hope to be able to communicate with you is these tools that I'm that I'm using here are so powerful for being able to filter content and be able to uh, get to the content that you're interested in. Um, and also, as I'll say in a little bit, set yourself up for serendipitous learning. Let me show you one more example, and then uh, I think it's going to be time to wrap up. The last app I want to show you is called Nuzzle, and Nuzzle is an app that connects to your social media accounts, and so you can connect your Facebook, you can connect your Twitter, and it is going to show you the top articles that people you follow are reading and sharing. So this Washington Post article about the uh, coronavirus and denial and dysfunction. Seven people that I follow on either Twitter or Facebook um, have shared that article. And so that's the, uh, the, the top article here. Uh, this is crowdsourcing, okay? And, but, it, but it builds on, th on connections that I've made in other places. So I've followed people on Facebook, I've followed you know, people on Twitter, and so now, what Nuzzle does is it enables me to see what those people are sharing and liking. And it's it's a filter. It's a really, really powerful filter. So uh, you can subscribe to people's uh, newsletters. Uh, you can, you know, I think click on individual people and have, you know, favorite feeds. Um, I tend to, you know, stay in this section on, you know, news from friends but you can flip through uh, the different choices here and 
depending upon I mean, best of nuzzle that that doesn't have anything to do with my accounts that's just what you know the most people are um are sharing and look at that there's <laughs> another article about zoom goodness gracious zoom is just you know getting uh well i, I don't know i won't i i um we are using google hangouts meet Google Hangouts Meet primarily for our video conferencing at school, um, and but I have used Zoom before and I like the platform. But you know, there's just a, there are a lot of issues that are making a lot of press right now. So that is the app called Nuzzle. What I think I will do now, I'll look at my clock and see how we're doing for time. And it looks like uh, we've got about 14 minutes left but we're not gonna we're not gonna actually take all that time i don't think i want to go ahead and wrap this up um so i hope those demos were helpful to you again on the slides you can link to the uh recommendation the, the five apps that i recommended and i definitely you know would encourage you to check those out um what i want to do now is just kind of wrap up by sharing a few challenges with you and then i will answer any questions that have come up in the chat room um I, th I think you probably just saw me do these things. I was filtering information. In the case where I was tweeting an article, I was tagging it with a particular hashtag that I follow and other people follow. Um, in the case of, you know, Pocket, I was archiving things so that I could, you know, you know see them later. And then I was also sharing. I, arg I will argue these skills to be able to filter information, tag it, archive it, and share it, these are essential information uh, abilities today. And unfortunately, in a lot of schools and classrooms, these aren't part of the conversation and they absolutely need to be. You know, literacy has changed and I'm gonna channel David Warlick, who is part of my origin story as an educator and a podcaster. Uh, you know, he, he wrote several books about uh, new literacies for the 21st century and the way literacy has changed. You know, we get the bulk of our information from digital sources today, and there is a mountain of information, and it can be overwhelming. How do we not just survive but thrive? We have to have new skills. And so the skills that I've been demonstrating in this webinar um, that are listed here on this slide are essential. And we as teachers need to under, not just understand, but be able to practice and you know live, utilize these kinds of, of skills um, on a daily basis as we process information, find information and share it. And we need to be able to help our students develop and cultivate these skills as well. Um, I have on our website that again, you can link to from the shortened address wfriar.me slash connected, um, a couple prescriptions. And I am going to encourage you to get connected on the uh, apps and the platforms that I've talked about today. Um, I'm also going to encourage you to use platforms that let you save things now and consume later because, you know, in the flow of the day, uh, when we're, we get an email from somebody with a link or, you know, somebody shares something on, on social media or whatever, you know, a lot of times we don't have the time right then to sit down and consume that, whether it's watching a video, reading an article or listening to a podcast or whatever. So tools like YouTube have a, a queue. I did that in Pocket um, or Pocket Cast where I said add to my queue. You have a watch list on YouTube that you can add to. Um, Pocket is that kind of tool where you throw it into your Pocket account and then you can go in later and you know not only read it later but you can read it in a better format because it's stripped out the advertisements and the distractions and things like that. I have a an icon there of Audible which I actually love and it, you know when I had a 30 minute a one-way commute to Yukon for several years. I, I listened to a bunch of things on Audible and, and the Bible app, the Uversion Bible app, and things like that. I want to challenge you to architect your own digital landscape with intention. And what I mean by that is all of us are bombarded with information coming at us from a variety of sources. We need to take control of that stream of information. We need to filter it and we need to decide intentionally, number one, you know, when to connect and when not to connect, but also, you know, what feeds of information do I want to have coming to me? Um, it is, we are, we are really out of pace right now with the skills that we need given the information landscape we're in. And if we don't do this, the result is just going to be even more and more overwhelm and frustration. 
Uh, I don't know about you, but email has been really, really challenging for me for a long time. Uh, email is not a tool. I mean, Gmail is fantastic, and there's there's better there's tools there all the time, and I'm I have filters on my email, and I'm trying to do all kinds of things. But it it's like an on it can be, and this is especially true when I was the director of technology for our school. I'm now a recovering technology director, uh, serving as a, a classroom teacher again and an instructional coach. But you know, filtering information and 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 making sure that you're able to see the important information, you're not missing important messages. Uh, all of those things are critical, and I, and so I like this metaphor and idea of being an architect because an architect is a designer. It's somebody who lays things out with like blueprints, and so that's what I think we want to do is design the digital landscape. And another metaphor I like is a radar screen. What do you want your radar screen to look like, and how are you going to filter that and basically structure that with intention? And here's the last point. Set yourself up for serendipitous discovery. And by that, I mean being able to discover ideas, videos, links that you didn't know you were going to find when you woke up in the morning. But oh my gosh, look at this. Look what, you know, Cheryl Oaks uh, just shared. Look what Miguel Gulen shared. Look what Jason Neifer shared. And so as we follow people using tools like Twitter, but also Pocket Cast for podcasts, and, you know, we, we end up you know, saving articles and videos, we create this information uh, radar screen or this feed of information that can be extremely energizing and beneficial. Now, it can also still be uh, overwhelming and, and we all need to be finding those times to, to turn it off. In fact, that's what I'm about to do here this afternoon is turn off my computer and just not, not be online for a while. But um, when I want to, you know, it's not like I'm just turning on the television to, to take a look at whatever broadcast media, mainstream media wants to show to me, even though there's so many different channels, being able to filter our feeds with intention and use these tools um, to, uh, you know, be able to um, you know, create customized essentially channels of information. It's incredibly powerful and it really can be transformative for learning. So <clears throat> um, I want to answer just a, a couple questions. And um, one of the questions I want to answer has to do with filtering feeds. Um, there is a resource that is located on our site. So if uh, we go to the website wfriar.me slash connected, again, that's going to jump us to this page <clears throat> and if you scroll down um, underneath the apps I've got some links to past iterations of this presentation so I shared this four years ago at our ISTE conference the International Society for Technology and Education at that time I was calling the presentation which is similar but there's a I, I made a lot of new content for today it was called discover and curate useful ideas for your classroom uh, and back in 2015, <clears throat> I called it Discovering Useful Ideas as a Connected Educator. Most recently at the uh, April 2019 Atlas Conference that was in Dallas, Texas, I did a session called Filtering the Exoflood, Strategies for Media and Information Literacy. And so that particular presentation, which also you know, has a, uh, a, a Google site page, um, it was actually a three hour workshop and so I gave um, the participants uh, an opportunity to use some different tools. And uh, I used this uh, manipulating YouTube series as uh, a catalyst for some conversation that we had. And then I think this is the, the document. So the entire workshop that we did was available here. Um, you know, I'm gonna admit to you, <clears throat> all the ideas that I'm sharing here are not fully fleshed out. Uh, but you can see as an example from the, the Google site, you know, this is iteration. I'm continuing to iterate on what I'm convinced is a tremendously powerful way of learning. And that is by connecting to other teachers and using these, these social media tools that are, uh, are transformative. And I have a couple books on here. One of them, this is, this is a little old now, uh, but man, this is just such a powerful book. This is Clay Shirky and his book called uh, Here Comes Everybody, The Power of Organizing Without Organizations. 
um, you know, he's one of the ones that, that talked to me about this idea of, you know, what's different between email and social media, the ways that you have not one to a defined many, but one to an undefined many. You know, we see ways that this is spiraling in, in dark and, and somewhat malicious directions with outlier organizations that want to uh, weaponize information and spread disinformation and, you know, basically sow seeds of chaos and um, even despair you know, in, in society. Um, but, but again, the positive potential of this is absolutely extraordinary. So I appreciate you uh, taking the time to listen and watch this, uh, this podcast presentation. I have gone, I think about 55 minutes. And so that is probably plenty long, but I want to encourage you again to check out the slides that you can find on wfriar.me slash connected. I did not put this at the end, but I probably, one of the things I love about Google Slides is it's so easy to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste that in. Um, and so this is the link that you can go to, to uh, find links to podcasts and, uh, you know, YouTube channels and websites and other kinds of things that I'm doing. And that is just wfriar.com slash after. So I wish you luck. I want to encourage you to, if you have not already, you know, download and install those apps and pick pick one pick one of those and and spend some time investing in it because i think the um, the benefits for you of investing in these particular apps have a lot of positive potential to constructively and positively transform your life and if they do or whatever your experiences happen to be uh, i'd love to hear from you so reach out on twitter or you can just find my contact form on my website westfriar.com thanks a lot everybody take care